Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am making freeze-dried spaghetti and meatballs and it's the easiest version ever because I'm only using three ingredients. I got all those ingredients from Costco, so I'm gonna do a complete breakdown for you. There are some things that I did that worked really well, I thought, and also some ways I think I could improve in the future. So I'm gonna tell you all the do's and don'ts that I learned just from one time doing it, so hopefully you don't have to make that mistake this is your first time, but like anything, I think it just is gonna get that much easier. But let's go ahead and just get started. For these three ingredients, I got the spaghetti for about $12 for eight packets. I got the sauce for $8.69 for three. That was a really good deal. And then I got the meatballs for $18 for 140 meatballs. That comes out to about 112 per serving when I added about 180 for the cost of electricity to run the freeze dryer. And I should add, these are really hefty servings. They're very generous serving sizes. So to average out the servings for the spaghetti, it said there were nine servings per container, but the spaghetti sauce said there were only seven servings per container. So I just sort of split the difference and made about eight servings with each package. The first step was to cook the spaghetti. So I just got the water boiling as I started to prep some of the meatballs. Now, it did help to thaw the meatballs out because they were easier to cut that way. If you're gonna cut them, be really careful because they tend to slip around and make sure you use good, safe cutting practices. The more thawed out, the easier they are to cut. I just cut them into quarters, and the reason I'm doing this is because it makes it easier for the freeze dryer to pull out as much moisture as possible, and it also makes reconstituting the freeze dried spaghetti and meatballs easier too, as opposed to leaving them whole, which would take quite a while for both. I was only able to fit two packets of spaghetti comfortably in the pot and that's okay because that actually ended up being the perfect amount to fill the freeze dryer. We have a medium sized freeze dryer. I'll link it for you below. After the spaghetti was done, I started to panic a little bit because I had cooked spaghetti, but I didn't want to add any oil because that doesn't freeze dry well. So I started just spreading it out on a tray, hoping it wouldn't all clump together. Looking back, I probably should have just mixed in the pasta sauce and stirred it all around. I think that might have been easier. I don't usually do that because I don't love when my spaghetti noodles soak up all the sauce, but I think it would have been totally fine for these purposes. Regardless, what I did is just put the spaghetti on the tray and then pour the sauce over it and squish it all together to mix it in. On this first tray, I did put the sauce, the spaghetti, and the meatballs all together on one tray. And I thought it made kind of a fuller tray than I was hoping for. So for the rest of the trays, I ended up just separating the meatballs, doing those separately. But this worked out. Even though it was over the top of the tray slightly, which is not really supposed to happen, and it ended up being okay. I did cut sections of the spaghetti and meatballs before freeze drying it because freeze dried food is really dry and brittle. So if I were to break the spaghetti after it was freeze dried without cutting it first, it would have probably just crumbled everywhere. So I was tried this for the first time and I was surprised to find that it actually worked really well. I am lining each tray with parchment paper first so that I can take as much food off of there as possible and keep it intact. So like I said, we have the medium size freeze dryer and it was the perfect size for two packets of spaghetti. I think I used about one and a half containers of sauce. I'll have to double check that. And then I had about half a tray and an entire fifth tray where I decided to just freeze dry the meatballs separately. Now I do have to be careful because these meatballs are pretty high in fat and meat that is high in fat doesn't tend to freeze dry very well. Next, I just pressed start and the freeze dryer started to cool down. I did have the thought to pre-freeze the food outside in the freezing weather, but the dogs were outside. So I figured it was probably best not to leave five trays of delicious spaghetti and meatballs out to be snatched up by the mutts. So I did have to allow the machine to freeze the food for me, but if you have a cold environment and dogs can't reach it, that's an easy way to cut down some time and cut down on some of the energy that the machine uses. Like I said, I did link this machine for you below. It's so easy to use. It has made preserving food so incredibly easy for us. We cannot wait to use it this summer when we have an abundance of veggies and even fruits from the garden and the orchard. But for this winter, I'm just focusing on knocking out some pre-prepared meals. As it was freeze drying, I noticed some slight shifting in the pasta, but not a whole bunch, but enough that 
I can see why it's important not to overload the trays. After the process was complete, this time I didn't defrost it, I just opened it up because I wanted to see if it was all done, which it was. It's kind of hard to see the difference on camera, but the spaghetti sauce just kind of looks like powder at this point. I could have probably freeze dried the spaghetti separately, but honestly this worked a lot better than I even thought it would, so I wouldn't necessarily change it. Since it's kind of hard to see on camera, I did some audio so you can hear the difference. So the meatballs almost sound like styrofoam now. They're just super light and airy. They are pretty high in fat, so I considered packaging them separately in case they were to go bad before the pasta or before we eat them, then we would still be able to eat the pasta and the sauce just fine. But ultimately, I just decided this time we're gonna package them all together and we'll just cycle through our food so it's not sitting on the shelf for 20 to 30 years. Not these packages anyway. I was really happy with how the cutting the spaghetti before we freeze dried it helped to get out these individual serving sizes, which aren't actually individual serving sizes. They're at least two servings per rectangle. There's another channel that does really precise measurements and kind of weighs each serving and gets super technical with it, which is very helpful. So I'll reference that one below if you want to see sort of the more technical version of this video. But if you're just curious on how the process works, this is the point where I just kind of packaged each one. I had one tray that included the meatballs and then I had about five bags worth that needed the meatballs added in. So I just sort of split them into five even-ish piles. Again, I don't like getting super technical with this stuff, so I'm just eyeballing it here. I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person where if I know I have to weigh everything and make everything perfect, I get so overwhelmed that it just honestly doesn't get done a lot of the time. So this way, at least I know we will have bags of prepared food that we just need to add water to, and they'll feed us just fine, even if some are slightly bigger or slightly smaller than others. When packaging the last bag, I did set aside about one serving size so that we can reconstitute it here and see how it goes. I do recommend, if at all possible, having someone help you with the sealing part because, especially since these were kind of like rectangular, cubish type shapes, the bags didn't want to seal super perfectly the first time. So if you have somebody who can hold the bag in the right spot and then somebody else who can press down the lever, it goes a lot easier. But I think I managed to do it by myself. Now comes the fun part. We are gonna reconstitute it and I'll speed it up because it's super cool to see the boiling water just sort of soak into everything. I think I let it reconstitute for about 10 minutes. And if I'm being honest, I think the meatballs, the very center, I think they could have used about five to 10 more minutes. But otherwise, again, I was really surprised at how well it went. I was surprised that the noodles didn't completely soak up all the sauce. And of course the noodles reconstituted really well as did the chunks of tomato, etc. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time.